Let's get into some intense description of Miss Alice Arbiter. Her long, slender legs rippled with hard muscle, and the delicate slabs of her thighs were set apart with a gully between them, giving her the aspect of a rider. Her mound was shaven bare like Dido's, and was deliciously plump like a pastry, with dark, quim lips, almost wine-colored, and the button of the surprisingly large clitoris quite visible like a proud jewel. (laughs) (laughs) The breasts were truly hillocks, jutting deep and wide without need of support, and the creamy tan flesh topped by big round nipples that stood up like red apples. What a vision. My god, she's got a proud jewel of a clitoris and red apples for nipples. Just let that sink in. Oh, here's more. The flat belly held a pleasant, held a pleasingly extruded navel that poked out like a smaller fruit to match her nipples with an adorable little whorl at its center. I just... My, my mental image is not at all as superb as Roger would have it <laughs> have it described. Her buttocks, too, were tan, as though she sunbathed naked and swelled like a peach of perfection with a very wide furrow that allowed a peep of her large, dark pucker made more vivid by the complete hairlessness of her lady's place. How he can see all of that looking at her from the front is truly amazing. I guess so many parts of her are extruding, they're easy to see. I don't I don't know. I I really don't. She began to speak. Her soft her voice soft, yet compelling. Law and order, she said, was the most burning topic of any society, since it was to do with keeping rascally males under control so that women were let go on with their work in peace, work that included enriching their minds and their bodies unhindered by male superiority. Why do I care? Oh my god. Each time I have recorded this, I have read it as male superiority when it is actually male stupidity, (laughs) unhindered by male stupidity. It seemed that most most of the crime and stupidity in the world were due to males, or rather to the lack of taming which males were not given. She deplored the decline in corporal punishment and said that whipping was a sound and just punishment for almost any misdemeanor and cutting short an interruption for females as well as males. The problem was that when proper punishment was inflicted by males on other males, it did not leave the correct effect, provoking resentment and hatred instead of submission. For a male to be truly tamed into docility, his punishment, that is, flogging, should always be at the hands of a female, whose gentleness would impart itself to his flogged body even as he writhed under her just lash. As a lecturer in jurisprudence, and a landowner as well, she put her principles into practice, and any of her hands who was guilty of slacking, idleness, or any misdemeanor knew he could expect a naked flogging in public, 
on both back and buttocks from his mistress, not before his comrades, but in front of all the women folk. At this she touched her leather cinchur, and it uncoiled as though by magic, and the progressives gasped. <gasps> I never travel without my stock whip, said Miss Arbiter, cracking the fearsome implement loudly in the sunlit evening air. It was a good six feet long, a massive, gleaming tongue, with a tip splayed into three smaller tongues and with metal studs along its length. The lady shivered in excitement, and Miss Alice Arbiter smiled with her partner with her panther's white teeth, and said a lady never knew when she would have to deal with an imperfect male. She proceeded to tell us of all the matriarchal societies in history when there were no gods, only goddesses, and no kings, only queens, and that everyone was the happier for it. All the time she stroked the oiled leather of her stock whip, as though eager to demonstrate her principles. Everything in life was about power. The brutal power of the male served merely to destroy, like a battering ram. A lady's power was to enslave, dominate, and entice by subtle wiles to the enrichment of enslaver and enslaved. Mrs. Mantle said proudly that she whipped Denton, the stable boy, whenever he was slovenly and he willingly accepted his humiliation. Miss Arbiter nodded her approval. Your head is was poking out in the background. I hope you don't mind that you're on camera. Well, as long as it's this head and not the other. <laughs> <sighs> that would get removed from YouTube. <sighs> okay. Miss Arbiter said that the implement scarcely mattered, and even a hard spanking would suffice, since the main point was the humiliation of the male, and the pain the means of conveying it. It is all a question of communication, she said. My nudity is a form of communication, for example, to show I have nothing to hide. I mean... Something intimate and disgraceful which you had never thought of confiding. There was a rustle as stockings and dresses shifted and a lovely swishing of silks. Miss Arbiter looked searchingly at Mrs. Mantle, who blushed and whispered that sometimes, when she was naughty... I'm sorry, when she was naughty, Mantle came to her on the bare bum. Eyes glittered, and the rustling of thighs and bottoms grew more animated as one by one the ladies confided their innermost secrets. There were tales of unusual positions for the act of love, of beatings received and administered to willing or unwilling buttocks. Mrs. Norange, a handsome lady of Mrs. Mantle's age, confided that she was poked in the bumhole quite regularly and enjoyed it. Well and good, said Miss Arbiter. I love a good bum-poking myself, from a male with a big cock, or a lady with interesting toys. But was your poker in your power, Mrs. Norange, or you in his? That is the question for progressive ladies. But our Italian guest has not spoken. The Italian guest, of course, is Roger, who has been introduced as Miss Carpaccio. Which, to my knowledge, is the name of a cold fish dish in Italy. Please correct me if I am mistaken. Blushing, I confess that my bottom was no stranger to the rod, and I had frequently been whipped on the bear. 
Miss Arbiter said that it was not much of a secret, and that most ladies could say the same. But, miss, I said coolly, staring in her eyes, I enjoy it, and crave nothing more. I saw Dido smile, and Miss Arbiter too, but my mistress reacted with a frown. Really, that won't do, she muttered under her breath. Then her lips tightened in a fierce grimace, and she stared at me and nodded, indicating clearly that another, that anything my bottom had experienced at her hands would be in nothing, as nothing to the beating I might expect in the future. And we will see if such beatings take place later on. And... Our next segment is going to talk a lot about masturbation, or as it is called, diddling.